Hey everyone, this is Varun Prater over here. Today I am doing another breakdown video. Uh, for this one, I'm not going to be doing as many edits or anything, just because that takes a lot of my time. But uh, I thought it would be cool to do uh, a nice little breakdown of this match between Bia Mosquito and Fionn Davies. Uh, today is the first time I've actually watched this match, and I thought it was pretty. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool, so I decided to make a breakdown on it. Um, so basically, uh, Fionn is. Um, uh, I think she's she's won a few majors. Okay, uh, I've actually rolled with her before. She, what basically her style is um, she's a uh, she's very physically strong for her weight class. I felt when I rolled with her, uh, she's um she's got a good bolo game. She's got very good judo. She's got quite strong. Uh, she's got she's quite strong on top. She's able to like she passes in a squat a lot of the time, which makes it really hard to get attacks off on her. Um, to be honest, I haven't watched all too much of being Mosquito, but from what I've heard from friends, apparently she feels like a light feather male when she rolls. So that apparently she's got like a really big strength advantage over the, a lot of the um, a lot of the people in her division. So we're just gonna get straight into this match. It kind of cuts off a little bit at the start, but let's get straight into it. So over here at the start, Fion gets a nice pull and she goes straight to Delahiva. Let's go back a second. Over here, when she gets her Delahiva, you see Bia is on one knee over here. Okay, so basically what this gives the option... So basically over here, you see um, uh, Fion has the collar and sleeve, and she goes straight for the overhook on the bolo. Over here, in that position, if you're going for the overhook straight on that bolo, it's actually a little bit of a mistake. So um, basically, if you're trying to set up the bolo and go to the back... What you have to do, you have to always off balance, off balance them to the 45 to your right in Fionn's case. If you don't do that, then you end up in this kind of position where they're able to shin slice outwards. So basically, either one, you want to get the bolo. So what you want to do, you want to off balance them to that 45 so you can capture the knee line earlier. I'm going to put a little clip of me actually doing this in one of my comps. Obviously, not as high level as this, but um, uh, that's what allows you to get the bolo on the, especially these lighter weight guys. If they shin slice outwards, then what you got to do, you've actually got to rotate all the way through for an X guard entry. And I'm going to put in a clip of Levi doing this to Gabriel Larges. So over here, Fionn should uh, should take her foot out, and she kind of attempts it, but uh, Bia is able to wiggle her knee a little bit. You see, Fionn is still going for this um for this kind of bowler overhook type position, but um uh but Bia's got a very good like base over here. If they if they so if we go back for like five seconds. Over here, you see Bia go, drops to her knee, okay, and Fionn's kind of going for that weighted position. You can either, one, get uh, become, uh, what do you call it, use a lot of physical strength to get under them, or you can use this to set up another uh, another bolo off balance to the outside. So you're trying to off balance Bia to the 45 and get to the outside if you're Fionn. Over here, this position as well, if we go a little bit further back, over here, this uh, this little position over here where Bia is on her knee, this offers a lot of other different options. So this gives up the single leg because they're defending the bolo a lot, and also there's a few loop chokes and attacks you can do on the far side. So if you if Fionn wanted to, she could go for the matrix entries on her right side, attacking Bia's left leg. But that would be a little hard. She would have to you she would have to like a uh, kind of physic make it a little more physical as uh, as Bia has her heel connected to her butt, which makes uh, all of these kind of entries a little more difficult. So we keep going over here. Fionn's still attempting that entry, and you're gonna see over here she's got that nice little collar grip, which is breaking Fionn's uh which is breaking Bia's posture down. We see Bia also goes for the scoop over here, which uh, because um uh, which stops the single leg a lot of the time. So then uh, Bia, I mean Fion, goes for that kind of ankle grip again, and try, and she's going to try and set up the bolo again. Over here, she's she's switching to a pant leg grip because as uh because uh, that that low base it kind of makes it a little more difficult to attack anything a lot. So she's trying to grab the pants so that Bia can't move all that much and repummel her foot in so she can put in a Delahiva. So over here. For some reason, they've stopped. I'm not sure why. Uh, we're going to skip forward a little bit. So, the scoop on the leg. So, this gives uh, Bia a few stack options. Sometimes to defend, uh, uh, a lot of the times the guard pair will put their foot in between to stop the stack. And then that gives a few more knee slide entries or bullfighter entries. But over here, okay, so Bia opts to break the collar grip. And Fionn does the right thing by trying to go for the jaw string. But over here, again, she still makes a little bit of a mistake of not going for the X-guard entries, okay? As Fia is, uh, as Fia, as Bia is turning out her shin. So over here, there's a few options you can do. You can grab... Uh, so if you're Fionn, if 
I'm not sure if Bia has a uh, a collar grip right now, but if she uh, if she does even if she does, Fion could use her right hand to go across pant grip and stand up with it. Um, or you, what you can also do, I've heard Gimendez talk about this. You can wait for your opponent to stand up a little bit and then off balance them to that 45, like I was talking about earlier. So you can off balance them to that 45 and then re into your for your bolo. Over here, uh, Bia looks really, really physically strong over here. She's kind of got that little 90-90 base that a lot of uh, that a lot of lighter weight guys like to do. So she ends up standing up again and staying in that little knee down position. So nice. Now Fion makes the adjustment over here. So what? Uh, so basically, whenever someone is denying you a bolo, they open. They generally op the base that you put yourself in to defend the bolo generally opens you up for a little bit of a single leg. So she starts stomping the leg and coming up for that overhook on the leg, on the the overhook on the knee. And she's going for the sleeve and feeding it really well. So uh, basically, Bia's options over here are to if she's strong enough, she can muscle an underhook. You can go for the Leandro or Homulo cross collar style thing over here. You can go for the cross collar and pan grip like Hidolfo does to Bernardo for real. Um, she could potentially back. Uh, she could potentially backstep her right leg out and attack an omoplata or a bolo sequence. Um, but over here she kind of just opts, she, uh, Fion just does a really good job of like just standing up over here. She's threatening that far leg, she's breaking down the posture and she starts standing up. Over here she does a good job of muscling her down, but over here Fion made a little bit of a mistake. So basically, a lot of the times I, f I feel like a lot of the lighter, uh, lighter weight guys, uh, they, um, they tend to get too caught up in the advantages and everything. I think what might have potentially been a better move over there is to stay and collect the two instead of instead of just coming up for that one point in the Abu Dhabi setting. Um, I feel like, uh, that kind of, in my opinion personally, I think it's good to like stay on top whenever you get the top position. You know, uh, you can play it a little bit tactical, but in these, six, but I guess it's also a six minute match, so you can also get away with only scoring the one point. But you know, in this spot over here, Beer's gonna come back with a vengeance to try and get those points back. So over here, Fionn is in the lead. She's doing a good job of pummeling her legs. She should be working to bring her right knee to her chest. Over here, so uh, Bia kind of mu muscles her down a little bit. And okay, so over here, Fionn with her left hand has to start framing on the on the cross shoulder. So Fionn with her left hand has to do a cross collar grip or a cross shoulder post with her left hand, and she should be working to either. If uh, Bia is able to rotate her all the way through, you can go up for a lot of the X-Guard sequences or the 50-50 uh, or the, the Crab-Ride sequences that you see guys like uh, Levi and Felipe Penner like to do. Um, so over here, yeah, so instead of just leaving her hand uh, just kind of uh, empty and not really doing much, she should be working on framing with it, but she is doing a good, jo uh, good job of, tumbling, uh, with pummeling, of pummeling with her top leg. So over here... There's potential, uh, there's potential, what do you call it, choy bar sequences. There's, um, she can, she has the option to just frame and push her leg back in. But Bia looks really physically strong over here, separating the knee away from the chest. Um, I'm not sure if Bia has a collar grip right now. Yep, so she, so she has a grip underneath the shoulder. So, uh, Fionn should have put all her effort into, instead of it inverting to the inside, you see actually Mikey make this mistake against Lucas Pinheiro. So instead of inverting to the inside, Fionn should actually be working to get her shoulders away from Bia so that she can frame and get her legs in. But um, uh, I think Bia is just really physically strong over here and was able to pull her shoulder off the mat. So over here, she goes, she kind of yeets her up, and then she connects her shoulder and her head to the chest, and this makes it a pretty difficult position for, uh, for Fionn in this, uh, in this spot over here. She gets the club around the head. And uh, Fionn to defend tries to like give her back a little bit and then try and turn into her, but um, I think I think Beers is really physically strong over here, but she does a good job recovering. She does a good job recovering. She throws her foot in over here. Uh, Fionn could be potentially looking to grab onto a leg and just trying to yeet over Beer. Um, she's she's kind of looking to get a frame with her left hand. Okay, but I think. I think, so she's doing a good job. She's doing a good job over here. But I think B is really physically strong. Uh, so she should she should probably put all her effort. It is, it's probably a little too late at this stage. But she pro should, should probably maybe like five or ten seconds earlier put her effort into breaking that, uh, into breaking that, uh, that collar grip that, uh, that Bia has. Um, she kind of looks like she's going for it, but B is really, really tight right now. And you kind of need, uh, Fionn's doing the right thing over here, you need to kind of spaz out a little bit in this spot, but her frames are kind of collapsed, 
and she's in a little bit of a difficult position right now. She's got the pant leg. She could, if she was strong enough, she could maybe uh, throw over Bia, over, uh, just over to her side, but she looks to kind of like square up a little bit. So over here, she she opts to um, uh, she opts to go belly down and try and get uh, get back to her guard. Let's see what happens over here. So it kind of it looks like it's working out a little bit, but uh, Bia has like a strong like uh, overhook over the top of the leg, but it works out for her. I don't think that's points. So Bia kind of just um, uh, she just she just kind of sits down and chills for a minute. Over here. So the thing with uh, with Fionn's passing style over here, so she kind of she really likes to go into a squat a lot of the time, and that opens you up for a lot of the closed guard entries, which kind of um, which kind of plays against her in this moment, okay? But she's just trying to be really aggressive right now. So right now she's just getting the collar, putting the hand in the stern, and that classical closed guard open over here. Um, uh, B is kind of doing a good job of overhooking, uh, like kind of bending the elbow. And, not make, and making sure that uh, Fionn's having a hard time getting her posture back. I think she's just stalling for the minute. But over here, she's got that nice cross grip on the sleeve. Yeah, she's looking to just grab the legs and try and bump her over. Going for those overhead sweep threats. Over here, so Fionn's options in this position, she can either give the deli heave a little bit, so she can step her right leg a little more to the inside and start pushing down on the shin. She could maybe go for a scoop with her right hand. Um... Maybe not so likely, uh, potentially a tire flip full stack with her left hand, um, uh, grabbing the jaw string and just kind of yeeting uh, Bia up. Uh, okay, so she goes. Oh, she so she does go for the scoop on the um on the on the, with her right hand. Uh, Bia's got the the left hand on the pant leg, which can make it a little hard. Ideally, if you're Fion, you want to, okay. So over here, so if they've got this, if they got the pant leg, you can sometimes shin slide over their hand to either break the grip or just pin their shoulder to the mat. But over here, Fion kind of opts to go into a little bit of a combat base position. Over here, if you're Beer and you want to be a little more offensive, you can. I think she's got a cross sleeve over here. Yeah, so she's got a cross sleeve. You can opt for go. You can opt for matrix entrances on the um. On uh, Fion's left leg, you see Mikey do this a lot. He's really good at this. I think he hit he hit a matrix entry on Lucas Pinero and that who's number one in this spot over here. Um, let's see what else. So I think Fion, Fion, so over here Fion at this stage, if they get across sleeves, they get any kind of like dominant control like that. I think it's best to do what Hudolfo does and kind of deadlift, do explosive deadlifts, so you can break the grip and separate the elbows away from the body, and then that way you can start your passing sequences, whether it be throw bys, scoops, over unders, knee slides. I think that's the best move in this scenario. But I think she's a little tired over here, so she's opting to just hold onto the collar and maybe not get scored on. Um. So over here, is she's kind of denying the Deli Heva entry for Bia by keeping her heel connected to the butt and with the scoop on the leg. Uh, she could potentially stand up and give the Deli Heva again, which is something I personally like to do. Um, uh, if she can, yeah, so as I said, she can stand up and explosively deadlift. Over here, this is a little bit of a difficult spot. Um, yeah, so she, she could potentially, if she stood up with her left leg, so she's working to get around the leg. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. Let's go back and see that for a sec. So over here, so uh, Bia makes the mistake of putting her foot to uh, putting her foot to the mat. Not necessarily a mistake, actually. I think she puts her foot to the mat to go for the for the kind of like the tricep drag over here. Oh no, not really. I think that was just a that was just a plain mistake because she's only she's only got the uh, a grip on the sleeve. So over here, she put she makes the mistake of putting her foot to the mat with the when when Fionn has the scoop on her leg. And then that kind of gives Fionn a little bit of a of a head start on the pass. Over here, Fionn just kind of has to like muscle it through and kind of get her get like get a chest to chest connection and pull Bia's shoulders off the mat so that she can't invert or spaz out. Um, but easier said than done, obviously. Over here, this is time for Fionn to just like spaz out and go crazy. Just um, she she has to get really aggressive on those passing sequences. But over here, with that squatting passing style, I think that's a little better if you're um. Uh, if if you're kind of a little more of a slow passer, so if you're someone like Lepri or Mikey, they have a kind of a slower passing style compared to someone who's a little more explosive and quick with it, kind of like a uh, Leandro Hodolfo. So over here, they're just resetting the grips. I'm not sure. I think the foot was just stuck in the lapel. So over here, uh, uh, Bia has like a very good position over here with the foot underneath the with the foot underneath the pit, 
and the um and the grip on the pants. This is kind of a very good like position where you can kind of buy a little bit of time. Um. There's a uh, there's there's a few options over here for her. So if she wanted, she should go. She could go for deep deli heva shots if she was able to pummel her foot in. Uh, there's also she could go cross sleeves. Uh, she could go cross sleeve with her left hand and scoop the scoop the far leg. Um, but over here she's fairly safe. She's not she's not in too much of a rush to score any points. Whereas, uh, whereas Fion she needs to like break the grips and explosively start to do something. So over here she opts to go for the uh, for the deli heva. Fionn's kind of like, she's a little bit tired, but she's also trying to push, so she's like driving into her a little bit, which is possibly not the best thing in this case. Um, it might be a little easier to try and stand up, try and explosively break the grip, scoop the leg and start going for a single under type sequence. Uh, maybe a throw by, like the Leandro style copying the knee throw by on Beer's left leg. Uh, Fionn would do it with her right hand. Uh, but yeah, so she's, she's starting to like break the grip. Over here, this is a really tough spot, though. This is a really good position to buy time. Uh, she can maybe threaten the same side knee slides with on her right side. Uh, Fionn could threaten the same side knee slides with her right side on her right side, um, uh, and then use that to open up, stepping over the leg, or um, or potentially like going for another scoop. She looks like she's kind of doing that, but uh, it's it's always hard to get that particular position. Uh, and then uh, the one of the risks of that, if your if your knee straightens a little bit, is that it opens up the closed guard. Uh, so Fionn's kind of stuck in closed guard again. This is not too good for her. Uh, let's let's see what's happening. So she's going for that cl uh, classical closed guard open again for her uh, hand in the sternum, trying to grab the sleeve. Um, over here, she should just be working to get up and take the risk of like kind of having the leg scooped. Maybe I was wrong actually. So <laughs> uh, that was actually my mistake. Over here, Bion has a really good, uh, what do you call it, lumberjack sweep. Okay, so over here, she, uh, she cups the, she, she looks very physically strong over here, so that might be a big factor. Uh, she's cupping the ankle, or the, the heel, and then she's put, uh, putting her hip into the knee or, the, or, or her thigh. She starts coming up, controlling the cross sleeve, that makes it really hard for, for Fionn to post and come back up, because they always need that bottom side. Um, over here, that was, that was quite beautiful. That was really nice. Over here, Fionn's trying to not give the points, but it's really hard in this spot, especially when you're tired. Um, she's, she's keep on fighting, and she's, she's still fighting though, so that's really, really good. You never really want to give up. Um, over here, she does a good job of turning into, uh, be a little bit. She should be able to get the close guard again. Okay, so, over here, this is not so good for Fionn right now. You can, you can kind of see she's a little tired. Uh, B, B is also very tired, but she's kind of stalling a little bit. Good move going, going double pants. You can kind of stall, stall there a little bit. Anytime they try to make a pass, you can just kind of stand up. You see Fionn's going for that break on the, on the pan grip, which is the right move. Uh, but, uh, but B is just kind of doing a good job, just pummeling her legs and making sure that Fionn can't really get anything off. Uh, yeah, so she's trying to sprawl and break the pan grip, which is kind of the right move. It's, it's, it's always really hard when I have double pants. Um, yeah, so uh, Beers is kind of doing a good job stalling over here. It's a really hard spot, especially if, if they're shorter matches. She kind of, like, Fionn's kind of forced to open up a little bit, and you end up just, um, you end up just giving things that you normally wouldn't if you're ahead on the clock, if you're ahead on the score. And then, uh, time runs out. Oh, uh, no, time, does time? No, time isn't run out. Uh, yeah. So, over here... Yeah, so I think uh, I think Bia just kind of stalls over here for the minute. Kind of goes for those. Oh, she's got a nice overhook, so maybe. So Fionn over here is trying to go for the Sao Paulo pass. That's very, very. Weirdly, it's a very. It's seen as a big guy move, but it's a very, very common pass of the lighter weight divisions. Um, someone that's really good at it is actually Talison Suarez. He's got. I remember him Sao Paulo passing me, and that, that hurt my feelings. Um, so over here, she yeah, she, she's just. So Fionn's just trying to muster everything she can get, and Beer's just kind of running out the clock right now. Um, looks like Beer's going to kind of... This, oh, no. So, over here, uh, Beer's just kind of playing it safe, just going with the sleeves and everything, but um, she ends up taking the win. It's a really hard, a hard-fought match by both of them. That was, that was a really nice display of jiu-jitsu. Um, I haven't watched both of these guys all too much, but uh, that, was, that was really, really nice to watch. 
some cool things to learn about closed guard and Delhi Heaver entries and guard retention. Um, I hope you guys, I'm going to try and find the clips I was talking about earlier and chuck them in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown. This is me just running through the ideas that what goes in my head when I'm watching a match rather than just like a strict kind of breakdown of it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe, obviously. Um, you can follow me on in on Instagram at shortthickboy. Uh, what else? Yeah, not much, not much. It's all, uh, yeah, so that's basically it. That's my breakdown. Hopefully you guys like it. This is kind of just me just going off the top of my head what I, what I think during a match whenever I watch one. When I'm generally not watching a teammate, when I'm watching a team, I'm generally going pretty crazy. But um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, like, subscribe, as I said earlier. Follow me on Instagram, and uh, uh, let me know what kind of matches you want to see next. And um, yeah, have a good day. Chill. See you later.